Hello and welcome you. We are having this very special chat with Equita Small Finance Bank top team uh, led by Mr. Vasudevan which is completing five years now and uh, on the occasion of uh, we are taking a look at how the journey has been so far and the strategic vision and uh, the step which the team wants to take to consolidate their position and grow ahead. Gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, all of you to be joining on ET now. Mr. Vasudevan, I'll start with you. Uh, before we talk about specifics, uh, let's talk about uh, the last five years. What are the key big learnings for you? And also it takes into account last two years of COVID, which was uh, horrible for humanity as well as organizations or banks or any company for that matter. Uh, so why don't you talk to us about the top three, four uh, learnings of yours. Thank you so much. Um, you know, Equitas, we started in 2007 as a microfinance company. And uh, equitas is a Latin word, which means equitable, which means being fair and transparent. So that's the theme of the organization. That's the basic DNA or basic culture of the organization, that whatever we do has to be completely fair and totally transparent to all the stakeholders that we deal with. So that's how the organization has been built over the last 14 years. And uh, we converted into a bank five years back to the day. And we are so thankful to you for coming and covering us on our fifth anniversary. Thank you so much for that. We deeply appreciate that. Uh, the five years of uh, journey as a bank has been extremely exciting. Uh, we set up a completely new vertical on our liabilities. Uh, we had this idea that somewhere uh, we have to also start looking at the digital uh, front. Uh, there were enough people who used to come and tell me, uh, you know, are you worried about getting disrupted by the fintechs of the world and the tech companies of the world. In fact, sometimes when I get um, invited for some seminars, I will immediately accept to, and tell them that maybe next year, as per your predictions, I may not exist, so I better accept this year <laughs> and come and speak. <laughs> right, so that's what people have been saying. Uh, and we have also been doing our little bit of homework on the background of what we do and what should we do on the digital front. Uh, and COVID, as you mentioned, uh, which has been rocking the world now for a couple of years, a uh, year and a half. Um, so that's been, in a way, I would say, a game changer for Equitas also. So we put a lot of our thinking hats uh, on our head over the last year and a half, and we have moved substantially forward on our digital forays. Um, so I will let some of my colleagues uh, talk about uh, that more in detail. Uh, but but uh, suffice to say that uh, the COVID has propelled our digital forests uh, significantly. And uh, we now regard ourselves as a fintech bank. So we don't feel that we are, uh, we are any less than a fintech. And we have the capability, whether it is monetary, whether it is digital, we have the capability to do what any fintech can do. But very critically, we have the extra element of a banking license and extra element of a large client base, large ground level, actual physical relationship with clients. So a combination of that and, of, and the ability to be on strong on digital is something that uh, probably is not available uh, very often in the market. So the COVID has really taught us that big lesson and I believe that we have, we have gone a long way on that uh, journey. Uh, in terms of our business impact of uh, COVID, I will let uh, Rohit talk about the uh, impact on our asset uh, lending business. Uh, but overall, um, you know, we are very comfortable with where we are. Uh, we did have in the beginning of last year lockdown, we had about 90% of our clients by numbers and 97% of our customer by value taking the moratorium. So 97% by value, they just took the moratorium, they didn't pay their EMI. And a lot of people used to give me lots of advices saying that no, that's not a right strategy. You should somehow go and pressurize and push your customer to start repaying and all that. But frankly speaking, we have built our relation over the last 15 years, 14 years with our clients. We know our clients. And uh, so we took the call that we will go with the clients and that's proved to be uh, very true. And uh, today we are very comfortable in terms of our NPAs or our uh, collection performance and all thanks to our clients who have been very good to us uh, during this lockdown and post lockdown. And this business is being so small, you know, their ability to come back uh, once the lockdown is lifted, their ability to come back, the speed to recover is very fast. And uh, because of that, they just come back and start repaying all over again. So, sure. so that's how it's been going over this period of uh, last year and a half. So, uh, you know, I'll talk about little pieces uh, with your team members subsequently. 
But you know, since you've been the leading the organization and talking of size, you are 25,000 crore in terms of asset uh, balance sheet now, almost 17,000 plus on advances. Talk to us from here on, with the pieces you've got together on a strategic side, uh, the roadmap from here on. How would you achieve that growth of say 25% uh, for some time, which you have guided for? How will you do business differently now? Uh, over the next five seven years than what you've done in the five seven years behind you okay so uh, see basically we are we are looking at a blue ocean kind of a situation where we see a large demand which is not serviced by the regular uh, banks uh, and that's after 75 years of post independence the reality is that a significant part of the markets are still not covered by the banks uh, people say that uh, that's the subprime market of India, but what we say is that the, we say it's an unserved market of India. It's not the subprime. You know, they are not bad clients. It's just that they have not been understood by any bank so far. And we have put in our efforts to go and understand them and build a business model on top of that understanding. Uh, so, uh, so we have been uh, pre-COVID, our growth rate used to be 35 to 40 percent per annum. Uh, COVID, of course, that's reduced. Uh, it's down to about 17 percent. Uh, but once the COVID lifts and life becomes uh, normal again, we expect to record uh, uh, our more, more or less a normal rate of 25 percent is something that we should be able to look at. And uh, how do we plan to do this? How do we plan to achieve that? Uh, there are two, three things that we should be looking at. One is that uh, we, we have built a large client base. We have built a good number of branches, we have got a large number of staff and, and very critically we have built up a very large client base. Now that client base, if you take uh, liabilities for example, till last year we had about 1.1 um, uh, million uh, liability customers. As we speak today in a five months period uh, for the current financial year, that 1.1 million has actually doubled to not double, maybe about 70-80% it's gone up to about 1.8 million. So we are acquiring customers at a very fast pace, uh, the new type of customers. Whereas our existing customers, we are able to offer more and more products and services which engages with, uh, them to us on a more closer basis. Now the going forward story of Equitas, as we see it, as I see it, should be how do we continue to leverage the investment of the past we have made in acquiring so many customers? Just as an example, I have a commercial vehicle customers, I have customers who are doing small business loans. Now they are about uh, 4 lakh clients. Now we just introduced a used car as a new product. But I am not going to the market and sourcing new customer for used car. I am just going to the 4 lakh and saying how many of them want a used car financing. They are a potential customer for used car. And then how do we target uh, the liability customer for a car financing, used car financing. So the, the one part of our strategy is how do we leverage the existing infrastructure and customer base to, to give more products and services and that could fuel our growth. Uh, and that's something that is already established and that's a path we have been doing and will continue to do. And as I said, it's a blue version, so we don't expect too much of, uh, you know, requirement that we have to grab customers from other uh, banks. We create our own markets. The second thing is the new customers that we are acquiring now. Uh, there's a challenge on how do we then uh, use that customer base and what are we going to do with those customers. That's a story that is still evolving and that's still unfolding and I, I hope that we have a better answer on that maybe as we go. go so, back. you know, there's a cost of growth and in your line of business which is lending, there uh, have been some, uh, you know, entities which have paid a very high cost of growth. So, how are you really managing risk because other side of growth, the coin, growth coin is risk collections all of that how are you you know making them uh, tight and a full grip on your collection because they say that lending business is actually not disbursement business it's actually collection business so how's your effectiveness and efficiency over there and you're making it better what's your grip there so you're absolutely right uh, you know lending business is never about disbursement it's always about collection and as the saying goes if you give a loan to a client uh, let's say you give a three-year loan to a client the last installment that he pays is your profit yes. <laughs> up to that you are only collecting your principal back so if he doesn't pay the last one EMI you have lost your entire profit from the transaction so collection is definitely the most crucial part of lending um, see in Equitas our DNA has been always asset quality quality first and growth next uh, so that's the DNA of the bank uh, and that was the DNA as an NBOC earlier also um, 
So we have a, a, a structure where a branch manager is responsible for both lending and collection. Uh, so collection is not a separate vertical. We have specialized collections team, but they report into the business team. The business manager is responsible for both. So it is his job to ensure that even at the time of onboarding, he onboards the right profile and right type of customer because otherwise his life is going to be... You're holding it accountable to the guy. If you give the loan, you better get it back. Absolutely. While credit is an independent vertical, but collection and business are merged. Um, and uh, that's proved to be a very useful uh, kind of a structure for us. I mean, the structures may vary from bank to bank, but we have been very comfortable with this structure. And it's proved uh, to be very uh, useful in terms of results in the last so many years. And our NPI has never been a concern for Equitas. Not even once in the last 13, 14 years, we have ever had NPI as an issue for, uh, for the bank. And um, we moved in uh, when we became a bank, the recognition norm of NPA was uh, to be different. You know, uh, typically as an NBOC you recognize at the end of the month, but as a bank you are required to recognize on a daily basis. We are one of the very few banks which moved into the daily recognition long time back. So our structures are very strong, our governance is very strong. We don't take any kind of a risk whether it is governance or on credit and uh, whatever is uh, uh, the most right thing to do is what happens here, even if it means that people are not going to be happy with us, but uh, we still stick to what we think is absolutely good for the bank. So governance you held uh, in your internal parameters or running the bank as a very top uh, priority. Uh, talk to us about some of the practices if you can, how you are trying to differentiate your bank with some of the brands which are also operating in the ecosystem. There have been some issues in the ecosystem which have come to fore uh, because of which small finance bank as a uh, you know overall has come in the spotlight Among for shareholders there have been value destruction regulators have been uh, completely unsettled and taken by surprise how are you uh, insulating yourself for any such thing which could cast a shadow on your brand right <clears throat> i think that's a very valid point very important point that you are uh, touching upon um, you know, there's, there is uh, nothing if governance is not there. There's just nothing left if governance is removed. Governance is the most fundamental, uh, you know, uh, requirement. And uh, in Equitas, right from the beginning, you know, as I mentioned, Equitas, it's a Latin word which means equitable, which means being fair and transparent. So right from day one, we have been drilling this concept of being fair and transparent into the system. And, um, and we feel that governance is not something that uh, we just use it uh, as a boardroom uh, discussion. But uh, we believe that governance is our unique differentiator between us and any other player in the market. And uh, that, that's run right through the system, even today as a bank. Our internal philosophy is, if you are in doubt, the benefit of doubt goes to the regulators and not to the bank. Excellent. Great. Let's move on to Rohit. Uh, Rohit, you uh, look after the retail uh, end of the business. Tell us how observations are on ground right now. Uh, how is the visibility from here on? Not immediate near term, but if one were to talk about 12 to 18 months, how is India actually coming back? The real India, they say, is at the bottom of the pyramid. So small, tiny businesses which you, your team uh, caters to, how are they rebounding back after this horrible uh, you know, COVID related impact? So at, at Equitas, we started you know, our business in microfinance. And the microfinance customer is at the bottom of the pyramid. Today, microfinance is only 18% of our book, but the small business loans is 82% of our book. And uh, the reason why this has happened is because we built our business on understanding customer insights. <laughs> As we came closer and closer to the customer, we understood what his long-term, medium-term needs are and we built all our products around those needs and that's how the entire business was built. Mm -hmm. So since we've been so close to the customer, we could understand that you know what does the customer need and during the moratorium, we proactively went out and said, fine, you have a problem, don't pay, take the moratorium and that has paid us very well. All those customers came back to us. An important point to note is, see, 90% of our customers are first-time borrowers. So we have gone and done real inclusive banking, you know. We've got those customers, we've improved their lives. And because of that, most of our customers are moving from the formal segment to the semi, from the, from the semi-formal segment, informal segment to the semi-formal and from the semi-formal to the formal. Mm -hmm. So many of our microfinance customers have taken small business loans. Mm -hmm. This has helped them 
to increase their business in the shops. Earlier they were one-time vendors, they've been able to employ more people, they've become entrepreneurs. In the vehicle finance business, you know, he was a truck driver, he was able to buy a vehicle of his own. So, you know, 90% of these customers who are first-time borrowers is a space that, you know, which we own. And this is a humongous, very large space in a country like India. And uh, it only depends, you know, how, how fast and how quickly we're able to cater to this space. So, Murli, let's come to you now. Uh, you look at a lot of th stuff, including a pie, uh, in the technology side. Talk to us about how data is being mined, how uh, technology is being uh, leveraged in growing business, uh, you know, at what uh, Rohit was talking about, if you could give your sense. See, Liabilities is uh, based on uh, two-stage platform. One is at a geography level, mm -hmm. which you address it through your branches and you have a combination of branches plus technology, which we call it digital, mm -hmm. which gets you a geographic specialization. Then you have a digital on the other side, where you actually play around consumption pattern based on demography. So these are the two extremes which we are playing around. Now let me put the perspective right there is a push-pull dynamics which keeps working on the consumption pattern of the consumer so on digital side let me start from digital and move towards the digital mm -hmm. how do you leverage how do you build trust and how do you conclude the sale and how do you keep the engagement everything happen or need to happen within a time span of seven to nine minutes so it's not the normal life cycle what we are talking about which means you are inviting a customer he needs to believe the trust and more in, uh, importantly he need to get the act right in form of you know deploying his money through you so this is the end-to-end -end cycle so there are two extremes to it one is we manufacture and distribute our own product which we say b2c which is our selfie range of product and through that we are addressing a targeted segment of consumers through the search engine optimization and social marketing which we do on a continuous basis and that's uh, generating some very good response just to give you a lakh or lakh and ten thousand accounts we get through that channel excellent mm. so on that note uh, we'll take a very short break uh, here on uh, et now on the other side of the break we will discuss more strategy with the top team uh, led by mr vasudevan at equita small finance bank We'll get new team members on how they are approaching growth ahead and rebounding very sharply uh, from COVID. Don't go anywhere. So we are in conversation with the Equita Small Finance Bank top team led by Mr. Vasudevan. Now I'm joined by Darayan Iswaran and Pallab Mukherjee, who is the Chief People Officer and Chief Technology Officer. Technology, uh, Narayan, is in focus right now because of cyber security related issues. I mean, I was surprised to see some of the largest corporations of India getting hit by that issue. Uh, of course, and there's a separate matter of technology as an enabler to boost business. Let's talk about the cyber security angle now, how seriously you guys are taking it. Absolutely, we're taking it very seriously. So, you know, with the game changing, more and more digital prominence, you know, coming into play day by day, so the security angle has to go hand in hand with uh, while going digital. So at Equitas, we have made tremendous investments on the security platforms as well. Uh, good that you asked this question because you know it's just yesterday that I got a mail from my CISO on uh, the IDBRT deal, drills that happen for banks. I mean, uh, earlier about six months back, we were in the B category group and now we've been promoted to A+. So as part of this group, what happens is, you know, IDBRT conducts various cybersecurity drills and uh, happy to share that we managed to catch hold of each and every incident that was hit on us. So we, we, we uh, you know, we, we take pride in uh, being A plus in that group and we are the only small finance bank uh, as of now to, to have done that. So that said, all this has been uh, possible because of the various investments that we have made up with uh, you know cyber security specialists you know we tie up with the world's biggest research uh, firms like Gartner to you know help us out on the day-to-day -day aspects of security etc. Palab, uh, let's come to you and uh, you know people's practices etc at Equita Small Finance Bank it was very unfortunate we saw uh, major cost cutting across the country many organizations uh, undertook that uh, how was the situation at your end and uh, what is the overarching theme for managing people which you guys manage uh, your practice here? So I'll start first with the mission statements, right? The mission statement says that 
you know, we want to create the most valuable bank for all stakeholders through happy employees. Right? So that's the that's the first part that we are happy employees. Now, how do we how do we do that? You know, it's uh, that's the part. It's important. So when uh, these waves hit us, uh, you know, uh, Vasu himself went on air uh, and he connected with each and every employee through his audio bridge. You know, and it was not a one-way audio bridge, but a two-way audio bridge. But then, you know, even they could ask uh, whatever they felt like. And his statement was very clear. His statement was that we want you to retire from Equitas. So forget job cuts, forget everything else. You know, we are asking you that, you know, please be with us through our life. Right, that's the, that's the first statement. The second, uh, you know, we went a step further. We stepped further in the sense, uh, you know, so Equitas is, uh, he says that Equitas lives in the branches. Equitas lives because of the front end players that we have, right? People who, are, who go out in our yeah. market, come hail or snow or, you know, heat or uh, monsoons, that's how it is. Uh, you know, so that's how you win people for life, I yeah, would say. Absolutely. So, Mr. Vasudhan, I'll come back to you. Uh, you know, you believe in all stakeholders value addition, not only the shareholders listed, but internal customers, external customers, everything. I understand that Equita as an organization is also taking a lot of uh, initiatives and resources in order to touch the downtrodden and people who are not part of the legitimate society yet. Can you give some color on beyond what? Uh, it, that's the ESG angle to it, but you are trying to make an organization or run organization with the soul. Yes, so in fact you touched the title of a book uh, written recently about Equitas, A Bank with a Soul. Uh, that's written by uh, Dr. Gary Ali, uh, an ex-IAS officer of the Tamil Nadu Cadre. Um, see, Equitas uh, was born out of the uh, desire to give back. Right from the day one, the desire was to give back uh, to the society. 90% of the children in our schools come from families with uh, income level of less than 2 lakh rupees per annum. So that's our target. Similarly, we have a health services, we have a tie-up with about 900 hospitals across the country and we conduct medical camps all the time. Uh, cumulatively, in the last 10-12 years, we have now touched more than 65 lakh people and that may very likely be the largest program by any corporate in India, I believe. And then we have a payment dweller rehabilitation program where we talk to people who are living on the payments, we help them to move into a house, we pay the rent on their behalf for six months, we pay the rental advance, and in six months we skill train them and ensure that they become self-sustainable at the end of the sixth month. And then we ensure that we, they get the ration card, they get the voter ID, they get their other during the six months, so they become the citizens of the country for the first time in their life. They are not even citizens of the country till that point in time. So, so we do a lot of things which is uh, our beyond banking uh, programs and uh, they are all addressed to the typical profile of the customers from where we, the community from where we source our customers also. So it's kind of a comprehensive solution that we are trying to offer to the communities that we work with. That's outstanding, that's really nice and very heartwarming indeed to know that the, the focus of the top management and the team is not only on the profits but uh, you know equitable distribution of that resources also in rest of the uh, society so on that occasion i'll wish all of you a good luck for the next few years and all the years that the organization goes forward and uh, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your uh, uh, strategy and roadmap mr vasudevan and all of you thank, thank you. you so much and thanks to et now for this program thank you so much with that it's a wrap on the show thanks very much for watching